day, everyone. This is Moji Taiwo, your host of the Immigrant Experience Show and the author of I Give Because I'm Blessed and Blessed Because I Give, a Chronicle of an Immigrant's Journey. Today on the Thai Show, we have with me Mr. Boban Sojanovic. Uh, Boban is the director of the LGBTQ and Vulnerable Population Services at the Center for Newcomers in Calgary. He is an author, a public speaker, and a human rights activist, amongst other passions that he has. Boban is very, very active in the city of Calgary, um, in the vulnerable se uh, sessions. And today, he is going to tell us about his immigrant story. But before we get to your story, which I am really intrigued by, I would like to tell us a little bit about Canada. Aside from English, French, and the indigenous languages, there are over 280 other languages spoken in the country of Canada. So now, Boban, welcome. And thank you for inviting our in invitation to speak to us about your journey. So tell us where you're from. Um, it's really nice to meet you and thanks for having me. So, well, uh, I came from Eastern Europe, um, a small country in Eastern Europe called uh, Serbia, five years ago, almost like five years ago. And during all that time, I'm here in Calgary, and I try to establish my life here and to contribute to community too. So why did you choose Calgary? How did you choose to come to Canada from Serbia? Um, it's a funny story, and uh, I think like most of stories why people choose Calgary are always like, a little bit funny because usually immigrants go to like bigger cities like Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, if they're like French speakers. Mm -hmm. And after my partner and I decide to move and we made decision we want to bring our cat. Like we don't want to leave our cat. And then like the whole problem starts. And we have some friends in like Vancouver, in Montreal, in Toronto. And we thought like, okay, we will spend like few days in like day homes until we find something, you know, like mm -hmm. things like that. And then we realized, oh my God, like all of them, they live in like studio or like one bedroom apartment or something like that. And I remember one night um, I chat on Facebook. I chat with my friend. She lives here for like 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. She has a house. And then I said like, you know, we don't want to leave Macy. That's the name of our cat. Okay. Like what to do? Yeah. And she said like, well, you're welcome. If you want to move to Calgary, you are welcome to come here. And like I have a room for you and all that kind of things. And after we finish our chat I was like Calgary you know I know only like Olympics and that's yes, it yes. and then I type on like YouTube I type like Calgary and there was like first video was for example 34 minutes someone drive all over like Northwest and like residential part and there was like nothing you know like nothing interesting it was not like attractive video it's just like random video and I was like whatever, we will go there. <laughs> and that is how we choose Calgary, really, you know. But I think it's not, it was not a bad decision. And um, I, I think like both of us, my partner and I, I think we are quite happy here. That's wonderful. So a friend of yours uh, offered you a one bedroom. That's a true Canadian hospitality right off the bat there. Yeah. So what made you decide to leave Serbia? Um, back in Serbia, I was human rights activist for so many years, and my activist journey was like long and quite eclectic. Um, uh, during the 90s, we had a lot of wars, and I was against all that kind of things, against wars, against everything that like war produce, all that like poverty, refugees, you know, like all that like people struggle and, and similar things. And then first I was 
uh, anti-war activist, then I became um, involved in reconciliation process. And when reconciliation process became a little bit like mainstream, it was not like that tough. I, I, I was thinking, what is like tough now? Let's try something that is totally unacceptable, place where I have to fight mm -hmm. for or something like that. And I'm a gay man, openly gay man all my life. And then I decide like, okay, let's fight for LGBT rights. But in Eastern Europe, it's quite like eclectic, you know. There is some support. It's not criminalized, but it's not that easy. And among everything related to this um, kind of rights, I was like, okay, organize pride. And it was interesting journey, but at the same time, like very risky journey. It was quite dangerous. Quite dangerous because I was like highly visible person. You know, I was constantly in media. So people recognize me on the street. Um, I was beaten so many times. Um, Neo-Nazi groups um, attacked my, my home twice. So a lot of insecurities were there. And over time, it was just it just became like more complicated. And at certain point, I just decide no, I have to leave. I can't control this anymore. I don't feel protected. You yes, know. I read in some of yeah. your entries that even the laws and the courts and police they were not uh, being protective after a while. No, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, like. For example, in Serbia, police will come, they will make report and that's it, you know, but nothing after that. So um, I had so many cases, you know, like unsolved cases, and uh, I was exposed to constant like threats. So I just decided like, no, I, I will I will leave this country like immediately after I was attacked for the last time back home. It was August 22nd, something like that. Uh, 2016 and then like few months after because I had to apply for a visa mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. I just find myself in Calgary and after that um, both my partner and I we went through um, inland um, uh, process we were like okay. inland uh, mm -hmm. um, asylum seekers okay. uh, we were granted for for our like refugee status so okay. now we are on our way to citizenship okay that's wonderful um so now with all that experiences that you have the lived experiences you work now with uh, refugees and people that are vulnerable with the Cagri Center for Newcomers. Tell us what you are working on right now. My first position was LGBTQ plus settlement practitioner. And we had idea in the beginning, it was like pilot project, six months only. And we had idea, okay, like there is, there are probably a lot of like LGBT people here who need settlement support and so on. But uh, very week after we start this program, we realized that people who most need this kind of support are inland claimants or asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of them here in Calgary because people are like desperate in their home countries in more than 17 70 countries in the world, like being LGBT person still is still criminalized mm -hmm. in so many other countries like my country. It's still to be like very hard mm -hmm. so people will decide to leave and find better future so based on that experience we made some kind of extensions okay. <laughs> of of our programs so now we provide full support to lgbt people whoever they are and like no immigration status matter or something like that and um, as you mentioned most of them are asylum seekers and um, again and i am very happy in a certain way because of, of, of that. Um, based on this experience, uh, we now we are now able to help also to some women who flee their countries because of domestic violence or gender-based violence, political refugees, all sorts of refugees. I mean, like asylum yes, seekers. Yeah. yeah, but um, also other group of refugees. And now we work very hard how to provide support to Afghan refugees because we expect more and more people from Afghanistan. And um, I don't know, it's, it's 
Center for Newcomers, for me, it's a nice place to be and nice place to, 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 to make some kind of balance between my own journey and contribution to, to, to community here. Because I can see what I'm doing, you know. Yes, you can there. see the results yeah. of what you're doing. Exactly. You see how you're impacting other people's lives in a positive way. If you have anything you want to say to anybody watching, as far as what you've gained in your experience, what would that be in a short phrase? Um, I'm quite new to Canada and um, also I'm working with newcomers. So I know usually in the beginning, everything is very hard. You have to learn a lot. And especially if you are, I don't know, like 35 plus or something like that, it can be even harder. But uh, I want to tell to other people to always look on the immigration journey as, um, as an opportunity to learn more, to unlearn some things, to learn new things, and to make their life easier because uh, many of us, we move here, we move to Canada because we didn't have good life somewhere else. And I think this country is safe enough for all of us. Um, a lot of opportunities are around us. Mm -hmm. So never give up. Never ne give up. Ne never give up. Never up. The most important. Yes, never give up. Never give up. So that, that is it for this um, session of our Immigrant Experience Show with Boban Stojanovic. Thank you so much, Boban. Your story is quite intriguing and, um, you know, we'll probably have an opportunity to talk again, you know, to, to continue this conversation. I am your host, Moji Taiwo of the Immigrant Experience Show. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you share, you like, and you subscribe. Thank you. Until next time.